So now it's time to start to the next session. I'm Shigeaki Morita, a chair of this session. Uh, this session is a, a session of hydration and interfacial water. Uh, we believe the uh, interfacial water play an important role for not only for water, but also for the materials. First speaker of this session is Professor Masaru Tanaka from Kyushu University. His talk title today is Role of Interfacial Water in Determining, determining the Interfacial uh, Interaction of Protein and Cell with Hydrated Materials. So please start. Morita Sensei, thank you very much for kind inter introduction. And first of all, I would like to acknowledge that Tenkoba Sensei and all of organizing committee of the Aquaphotonics International Conference. Uh, first of all, so I would like to ask you why bio medical healthcare materials or devices nowadays? So this is a typical example of the bio interfaces for COVID-19 diseases, uh, patient recovery. So this is uh, ECMO. ECMO means extracorporeal membrane oxygenation. Uh, this is, uh, we would say, artificial lung devices. As you can see here, uh, for example, this is the uh, artificial run, and components are uh, polymers, uh, metals, and ceramics. So any types, all of all of all of material types used for medical devices like this. And another example is artificial run and heart and artificial blood vessel or cassette in contact with human blood. So we have been uh, prepared 42 mesoxidative accurate coating medical devices. So biocompatibility is one of the most uh, critical issues in biomaterial design. However, the mechanism, the other mechanism of the biocompatibility have not been understood at the molecular level. So today, I would like to talk about uh, medical devices and bio or blood compatible polymers. And the important part is here, water states of the polymers and what is intermediate water content affect how the water states affect the biocompatibility. And finally, how to design of the polymers based on intermediate water concept. So we'd like to say, so how to collaborate with aqua photomics communities. So this is a typical example of the biocompatible polymer, polymeric materials. So as you keep, as you can see here, this is the biomimetic Tsubita ionic surfaces. You can see here, choline uh, moiety with uh, mesacrylate. And you see here, this is the typical hydrophilic surfaces, 42 hydroxyacetyl mesacrylate, already used as soft contact lens, as a soft materials. And this one is a typical example of the biopolymers, polysaccharide, like heparin. And you see here, this is a block copolymers with uh, wearing uh, OH group, polyhema and styrene and polyhema, hydrophilic, hydrophobic, and hydrophilic. This type of copolymers uh, form micro domain surfaces in dry state after casting of the polymer solution. And this one is a poly 2 methylcysteine accurate, very simple chemical structure, PMEA, but uh, showed, already shown, so biocompatibility. So these are typical examples. So chemical structures are completely different 
and uh, physical chemical properties uh, different. So what is, this is just a definition before my talk. What is biocompatibility? The properties of materials which do not have adverse effect when the materials contact with proteins, cells, and tissues. We could stay uh, non fouling or bioinertness, status, less non specific, and less immunoreaction. This is the meaning of the biocompatibility in my presentation. The question is what is happening at the interfaces between blood and devices? So various chemical and physical factors always influence the performance of the medical devices, such as stents, implants, blood vessels, lung and heart, as I said. So this is a typical bio interfaces, cells, proteins, and materials interaction on biomedical devices. You see here living cells, such as blood cells, platelets, and also the proteins from human blood, blood and uh, coated uh, polymer chains on medical devices. So we can observe always protein absorption and desorption in blood flow system. And if, uh, th there, are, there are two bio interfaces here and here. One is cells and proteins interface. The other one is a proteins and the polymer interfaces. If we zoom up here, so you can see here the cell membranes hydrated, always hydrated, not dry. So, uh, and also hydrated wet protein and polymer chain as well. So you can see here the interfacial water exists always in between. The question is, what is the role of the water molecules at the bio interfaces? So this is the initial event at biological fluid and materials interface. So when the biomaterials or medical devices come into contact with human tissue or blood, water molecules immediately absorb onto the surfaces like this, first of all. And then uh, this is followed by protein absorption, like this. And protein restructuring and denaturation of the absorbed protein. And finally, cell adhesion and activation. If we focus on the first event, initial event, water absorption on the materials, so we categorize the three, at least three types of water, hydrated water, free water, we could say uh, scary, scarcely bound water. And second one is the intermediate water, loosely bound water. And finally, so third one is the non-freezing water, tightly bound water, more strongly bound to the polymer chain. So there are three types of hydrated water. So this is the history of the uh, relationship between water states and bio or blood compatibility from the literature. When we go back to the 90s, 1970s, uh, so several researchers from the US, uh, they told us the amount of the absorbed water affect the blood compatibility. And second, the mobility of the, as well as the amount of the water, uh, mobility of the polymer chain and the hydrated water affect the function. And then surface bound water and hydration interaction energy of the uh, polymeric materials affect using the simulation study, MD study. And then stability and density and arrangement of the surface water molecules affect the bio interfaces from Nature paper in 1996. 
And after that, higher content of the free water and increased mobility of the polymer chain effect. And as well, free water and non freezing water around the polymer chain they focused on. And formation of the of a structured or tightly bound water layer affect the protein absorption from German group. And molecular mobility again and the flexibility or almost the same meanings, revival, and so on. And so far, we have been focusing on the bio interfaces, how to visualize, how to uh, recognize the bio interfaces at molecular level using atomic force microscopy or spectroscopy, I collaborate with uh, Morita Sensei and Hayas Sensei. And they are, they are also invited speakers in this conference. So this is a control experiment in terms of thermal analysis. So DST, differential scanning calorimeter heating curves of pure water itself, just a bulk water. You see here, uh, this is a typical uh, temperature program, five degrees C per minute from uh, 37 degrees C biological temperature, body temperature to minus 100 degrees C. After that, uh, minus 100 degrees C to body temperature. And this is a heating curve, heating curve. You see here, the melting uh, at zero degrees C, just melting of ice. So the entropy change um, is 334 millijoule per milligram uh, from the area. Okay, so this is uh, just a, a common phenomenon. Uh, I phase just a phase transition from ice solid to liquid, like this at zero degree C. This is water itself, pure water. But what happens if we combine the polymers and water, pure water? This is the DSC thermograms of hydrated PMA. In this case, uh, PMA is a water insoluble polymer. So we define, we can define the equi equilibrium water content around uh, nine weight percent. So you see here, uh, in case of PMA water system, so you see here the cold crystallization of water peak at minus, one, minus 40 degrees C, very low temperature. And you can see here the melting of ice below zero degrees C as well as zero degrees C. This is similar to pure water. Hydrated water to polymer change, but similar to uh, pure, pure water. We can define such uh, type of water as a free water because of melting of uh, melting of ice at zero degree C, like this. But this peak crystallization of water, hydrated water below zero degree C and melting of the ice below zero, zero degree C, like this. We can categorize this type of hydrated water as an intermediate water because this behavior is different from conventional free water and non-freezing water. Non-freezing water is very simple. This is it, so non-freezing, not crystallized even at minus 100 degrees C. So this means we have categorized three types of hydrated water in polymers. So this is the evidence of the uh, crystallization of water and uh, melting of ice from XRD and DSC measurement at the same time. Uh, XRD DSC curves of equilibrium hydrated PMEA. And this is the DSC, DSC curve at the same time XRD measurement. Uh, you can see here, after we observe the cold crystallization of hydrated water, we, 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 see, we could see the 
uh, uh, water crystallization peak here after cold crystallization and melting of ice just zero degrees C. So this means the cold crystallization peak uh, showed the phase transition from the amorphous ice to crystal ice. And again, so this is uh, uh, important so uh, terminology, class, class, classification of the hydrated water. So water uh, we, uh, means so bulk water, not interact with materials, just bulk water and hydrated water, uh, water in or on polymer chains. And we can categorize further two types of hydrated water. One is freezing water, crystal, crystallizable, freezing water. The other one is non-freezing water, non-crystallizable, even at minus 100, 100 degrees C due to strong interaction with polymers and water. And freezing water, we can categorize two types, free water, so melting at uh, about uh, zero degrees C, okay? And intermediate water is different from the behavior from free water and non-freezing water. Finally, we have, uh, we recognize the three types of water, free water and intermediate water and non-freezing water. So this is a typical time resolved ATR, IR spectroscopy. Uh, of the PMEA water system from dry, completely dry to wet. So Monitor Sensei will present uh, such kind of very interesting spectra uh, tomorrow morning. So shortly, so we can observe the uh, very nice spectra in case of dry state of the polymer, only PMEA without water. In, in the range of the OH stretching. So there is no peak, but after one or two second uh, water absorption, so we see, we could see the something like this peak. And after that, like uh, after 10 minutes, we obtained uh, such kind of peaks. So this is a subtraction spectrum. So non-freezing water, so, you see here the peak top is around 36 and the intermediate water peak top here, 34 and free water around here. And we can also obtain the fingerprint region at the same time. So we, we categorize that uh, intermediate water interact with here in the case of PMEA. And this is a, a result of the solid state enema uh, of PMEA and the control PHEMEA, uh, PHEMA polyhema, so hydrophobic uh, polymer. So you can see here the in case of the saturated water state and lower water content. In case of solid state enema, so sharper peak, sharper peaks means mean and higher mobility of the hydrated water and the polymer chain. So in case of PMEA, so mobility of the water molecules hydrated in the PMEA is much higher than uh, uh, polyhema. Mm, because the polyhema, uh, in the case of polyhemia, the mobility of the hydrated water uh, dependent strongly on the water contents, something like this, and the temperature. But in case of hydrated PMEA, we always observe the sharper peak regardless of the temperature and the water contents. This is a big difference in terms of mobility of the hydrated water. And uh, this is the uh, 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 th three types of uh, hydrated water. And in case of biopolymers, proteins and polysaccharides and the nucleic acid, DNA and RNA, 
we always observe the predominant amount of the intermediate water. It depends on the sequence, but uh, anyway, so we observe the predominant amount of the intermediate water as well as free water and non-freezing water. But in case of synthetic polymers, this is biopolymer. This is synthetic polymers. We categorize two types, biocompatible. So this means bioinert can be approved by FDA. So this is a case of non-biocompatible polymers, uh, not approved by FDA, not implantable. So this is a typical uh, synthetic polymers. So this is a big, what we observed was, so a big difference between them. So intermediate water observed uh, in the biocompatible synthetic polymers. So in terms of freezeability and the NMR correlation time, in, in terms of mobility and ATR, IR, OH, splitting region, peak tops, and binding constant of polymers are stronger and moderate and weaker. So this is uh, another example of the role of, role of the interfacial water layer using by force curves. So Professor Hayashi, uh, uh, who is uh, one of the uh, invited speakers after my talk, just my after talk. So he found and collaborate with Morita Sensei, so intermediate water here. So this is a typical um, clinical test using human blood platelet adhesion. So lower platelet adhesion means blood compatibility. So red and blue and yellow surfaces show always repulsion force like this. So repulsion force. So low platelet adhesion surfaces show uh, repulsion force under physiological condition. So health sensei will explain in detail after my talk. So if you look at the chemical structure of the uh, uh, polymers, PMEA uh, here, and if you look at this, uh, side chains are completely same, only main chains are different. So this is almost the same, polyhema and PHEA, side chains are completely same. You see here, uh, and if you look at this, if we delete the mesoxy group like this, and if we switch from the uh, oxygen to methylene like this. And these are hydrophobic, uh, no, no, hydro hydrophilic uh, polymers. So we prepared uh, hydrophobic polymer like this. If we switch from the OH group to the phenyl group and alkyl group. So we, finally, we can obtain, obtain the various polymers with different uh, physical chemical properties. So, and these are result of the DST curves of hydrated polymers. This is the case of PMEA water system. And this one is a PMEMA and water system. Uh, we couldn't see the intermediate water here. And no, and no, there is no intermediate water. And the result in terms of the uh, cell culture uh, experiment. So what we found is only PMEA showed biocompatible and bioinert compared to other polymer system. This is the experimental result. And this is a polymers with intermediate water. So in case of a new designed polymers, polytetrahydrofluorofluoride acrylate, PTHFA. So which showed uh, intermediate water here. And look at here, so uh, biopolymers, typical biopolymers, heparin and the chondroitin sulfate and, uh, uh, and DNA, RNA, and such kind of um, sweeter ionic system carboxybetine like amino acid polymers and MPC phospholipid polymers and sulfobetine like this and a PEZ and PVP 
So these are all biocompatible, bioinert. Uh, recently, we found the intermediate water on calcium phosphate minerals, not uh, organic materials, but inorganic materials. So, so this means that so the, we can bridge the previous findings on the um, organic materials and on the biocompatibility of soft and uh, solid material, inorganic materials as well, like this. So, so what is uh, my our final um, goal? One of the final goals is this: how to design the biocompatible polymers for medical devices, so we can extend the intermediate water uh, concept. So, intermediate water contents affect always cell adhesion and protein absorption and denaturation. So, the, we we have achieved so high throughput screening. Uh, and the polymer synthesis. So how to control the intermediate water contents? So we have published the side chain spacing control like this uh, using a, a new polymer synthesis system. So impact on hydration, hydration states and blood compatibility. So this is a typical result. So this is a new polymers we obtain, we synthesize. So in terms of side chain spacing control for biocompatibility. So platelet adhesion, you see here. So HP2 is a, a good result compared to other uh, side chain spacing. So this is a relationship between intermediate water contents in PBA, a buffer solution and platelet adhesion. You see here, we can, uh, you can see here the very clear relationship between intermediate water contents in hydrated condition, uh, biological condition, and platelet adhesion. So this is a relationship between intermediate water contents and uh, platelet adhesion, and denaturation degree of the adsorbed proteins. In case, in this case, fibr fibrinogen, because fibrinogen is a very important uh, protein uh, to control the platelet adhesion. So you see here. So uh, we synthesized new types of polymer like this and uh, carried out some experiments and uh, uh, plot the relationship between intermediate water contents and the number of adherent platelet. And this means the uh, denaturation degree of the adsorbed fibrinogen. So you can see here the very clear relationship like this. So intermediate water contents increase uh, with uh, a denaturation degree of the proteins is decrease with increasing of the intermediate water content. And denaturation degree of the adsorbed proteins and the platelet adhesion are very clear relationship like this. So the, this means the intermediate water content of the hydrated materials affect the denaturation degree of the adsorbed proteins. This is very important at the bio interfaces. And finally, we observe the uh, stem cells behavior in, in the field of tissue engineering, regenerative medicine uh, as a future medicine. So intermediate water contents uh, affect the stem cells behavior. So intermediate, uh, so this, this is uh, PTHFA and PME and PME3 and 2A means uh, different intermediate water contents. So, uh, what we observed um, was so intermediate water contents of the hydrated polymers affect the cell adhesion shape, uh, number, and the multi uh, mobility, motility, and the cytoskeletal, cytoskeletal organization, uh, acting formation, for example, and uh, growth, cell growth, uh, proliferation, and the differentiation of the stem cell uh, by using. Mm, the uh, very safe and cheap in inexpensive polymer, synthetic polymers without any biopolymers, proteins. So this is summary, the hydrated water in polymers uh, can be categorized as three types, free water and intermediate water and non-freezing water. So intermediate water was found on the hydrated biopolymers 
protein, polysaccharides, and nucleic acid, and hydrated by compatible synthetic polymer. This is common point. So intermediate water contents affect the uh, denaturation degree of the adsorbed proteins. So we could say intermediate water content uh, could be one of the main screen, one of the main screening factors, and uh, not all, uh, for the designing of the smart biomaterials. So finally, we, we would like to acknowledge uh, the all of uh, our members and the Professor Tsuruta Sensei, who is a godfather of the bio polymeric biomaterial science. Uh, and congratulations on Tenkoba Sensei for organizing the Post Aquaphotomics Conference. Thank you very much for kind attention. Thank you for your presentation, Professor Tanaka. So now open to the discussion and comments. We can accept only one question or comments. Can I um, uh, yeah. have a question? Sorry. So I was just wondering, it, my question is uh, related also to the comment you can find in the chat section. I just wanted to, to ask, uh, these polymers that you find found uh, biocompatible, they're all, they all have some kind of iron groups. They're all charged compounds. So you mean, the, uh, in, uh, for example, this? Yes, yes, yes. What we found? This is uh, very neutral, non-neutral polymers, yeah. Uh -huh. So uh, that's um, non-anionic. That means um, non-anionic. Yes. So not is that is related to biocompatibility or not? The charge. Uh, very very important point. So electro in terms of electrostatic interaction. So uh, uh, we have uh, many data using cation cationic polymers and anionic polymers and zwitter ionic polymers and non-ionic polymer system. The important thing is, so in case of uh, uh, cationic polymers and non-ionic polymers, we, we observed always uh, electrostatic interaction of the uh, proteins. This means the non-specific interaction with proteins. This is not good phenomena for biocompatibility. Okay. So Thank you very much. Very, very nice. Professor Tenkoba, um, give a comment. Thank you. Yes, Professor Tanaka, thank you very much uh, for the presentation and for your kind um, um, speech. I, I was always have been thinking about, you, you said that um, you will talk about how we can uh, collaborate. Um, and the previous times also listening to you, um, you can do amazing things. I mean, uh, you can, and I remember very well, you have stated once that you can do whatever molecule you can, you can imagine, um, you can make it. Um, and I think um, each system requires different approach, right? But if you have a tool to um, describe this, uh, you called it intermediate water in, in more precise details and use it as a feedback uh, by building molecule by uh, elements by element. So you, you see how um, it is, if it is a feedback, then you'll see how the water changes and how the functionality will change. So it, it, it is, you're going through a very tedious process by measuring. Um, I can see that it is um, sometimes it's it is destructive, but if um, if you can describe this intermediate water in, in more details and measure it non-destructively, that will be a great help. So I this is where I can see the the collaboration with Aquaphotonic Society um, because uh, it's really. A wonderful work and, and this is something that we de desperately need now i mean the, the whole technology world and um new development in medicine medical science absolutely needs this so and we have it we, we just have to use it what do you think about this yeah uh, thank you very much for your uh, uh, very important comments so we would like to collaborate with your communities to visualize 
the, yes. what is the intermediate water? How to form the intermediate water? So using your your various techniques, in a in a an NIR or something, mm. uh, we are very happy. Mm. Yeah, um, I, I I really look forward for uh, um, you know, Professor Morita and uh, Professor Hayashi's talks. Maybe we'll find out find out. We have to. I think yes, we have yes, to. So uh, we can. We uh, yes, we can yeah. find to uh, collaborate. Mm. Yes, thank yeah. you very much. Yes. Thank and, you very much. Yes. Short comment from me, Elena. Uh, just one comment uh, in regards to the story of Professor Zenko just now. Uh, regarding the destructive analysis by differential scanning color colorimetry, um, I think we developed something that can replace this method by using the temperature-based aquagram tools. So that is something I think that can uh, really help us observe the water species and the changes they go during this uh, phase transition. So yeah. I, I really hope we can develop more on that. Thank you. Thank yeah, you, so you, you are right. Yes, you are right. Yes. Yes. Temperature dependence measurement. So we need a 37 degrees C measurement. Mm. Yep. Yep. In, so, 